Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good, I'm great. I'm out here looking at the pool, deciding whether or not I feel like cleaning it. I don't think I do. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pass on that. It's way too cold. I don't feel like it. I'm going to talk about this lime tree, but the angle of the sun. I mean, this is, that's terrible. You can't see anything. There's isn't much to talk about. I repotted it. I'm just surprised at how well it's, apparently I'm gonna talk about it anyways. Been surprised with how well it's doing because it's been so cool at nighttime and I just I don't this lighting come on now well it's covered in buds and with the nighttime temperatures dipping into the 30s Fahrenheit that's not necessarily enough to kill the buds off but it's been like getting down to like 30 and 32 and it just keeps doing so well and this is only the second year I've had this key lime I usually have grown like Meyer lemons and oranges and those sorts of things. Well, not those sorts, of th just those two things. I guess I've had like calamondins and kumquats and other citruses, but this one uh, was having some chlorosis or what looked like chlorosis, meaning that the foliage was yellowing. It should be a nice green color. I supplemented it just a smidge to help with the chlorosis and I didn't notice much of a change. So I repotted it, gave it some fresh soil with a nice slow release. This is all like a month ago. This got cut out of the last vlog. That last vlog I had like five or six hours of footage that I had to narrow down to an hour and ten minutes so it would be something a little bit more cohesive. It's actually it started to green back up quite nicely which I'm assuming must be because of the soil. Sometimes with tropicals and semi-tropicals the foliage can start to yellow up and get some irregular coloring on it when temperatures get fairly cool when or just too cool to the plants liking it slows them down from taking up nutrients in the ways that they need to to have nice lush green healthy like firm robust growth since the temperatures have stayed the same i'm just going to assume that it really was just time to bump it up a pot size none of this really matters i haven't really talked about this plant before i'm just surprised that it's doing so well with how cool things have been i was really expecting for these flower buds to pop off with it like having frost. But at the same time, the cold nights are actually what triggered it to start blooming again. So I don't know. Citrus can be surprisingly cold hardy sometimes. I need to go to the hardware store. I haven't been in a long, I haven't been anywhere in a long time for the most part other than like doctor's office visits. And even that's going on three weeks. I have another one coming up here pretty soon. Hopefully my last one in a few days we will see but i need to get mulch it's not quite time to mulch them now mostly i just want to go get it because sometimes i wait until it's like really cold out and then the bags are frozen it's not so much fun loading a car up with frozen mulch i can't get very much though because i'm not really technically probably supposed to be lifting that much like i can do a little but normally i get like 60 bags for all the bananas and palm trees and everything i think that, that, that i'm not gonna be able to do that but hopefully i'll at least be able to get like i don't know 15 or 20 something make a dent we will see go to the hardware store nothing's ever as easy as it should be i have new license plates hey there's my blurry roof oh it's not me that's a car i thought that that no anyways i got new license plates because my tags were expired now they're giving out new plates and the screw was stripped so that was that was fun good thing i'm going to the hardware store because i'm gonna need to get new screws for my license plates i assume that that's where you buy these things right this isn't the bad one there it is that was fun to get out thank goodness for vice grips oh come on always something these old cars that's just low tire pressure no surprise there so that is a lie i'm freezing my pseudobulbs off out here i am like like my bones are cold i that can't be right i need a new thermometer it's lying to me I'm not positive there is even a point in vlogging going to the hardware store because COVID has gotten very bad let me go ahead and fix my hair while i'm here no it's not fixable it's because i cut it myself it's a mess COVID, i mean as it is everywhere it's really bad right now so i'm going to be in and out as fast as possible I have a quick look at the plants it's not crowded there aren't very many people here so I mean, I don't feel like that at risk, but you know, still. And uh, I'm using my phone because I'm out in public and the audio through my phone and video, like really kind of just, it just, would you lock please? It just sucks having the mask that definitely doesn't help any, but maybe if I just pull that nice and close to my face, won't do that. That's annoying. You can hear every single breath. I don't like that. Well, they have plenty of mulch. That's good. But I just, with the low tire pressure, I probably shouldn't load the car up with mulch, should I? Hmm, that's fine. My brother-in-law's coming over next weekend. He has a truck. He can he can handle the mulch. I probably shouldn't do it anyways. I was just feeling anxious and I wanted to do things, physical 
things, lots of rocks on the ground. And it would appear I missed out on the clearance events for the plants. My buddy's gardening, which is great. Usually there's still like something, but nope, not this year. There's nothing. Missed, I missed the shrub clearance. It's okay, Home Depot's right next door. I can check them out afterwards. There are plenty of house plants. That's not unusual. This particular Lowe's usually has a decent selection of at least the necessities, the majesty palms and the robolinis, and there's some like cane yuccas and tons and tons and tons of all the little things. Little philodendrons, various dracaenas, lots of pothos and like kind of icky looking succulents. And oh, what do we have here? We've got several of the raven, of the ZZs. I don't have one of these. Everybody likes them and I don't fully get it, but maybe it's because I don't have one. Is that the case? I don't know. Don't get me wrong, I think they're cool, but it's just like, I don't know. I don't, I just don't, I don't think it's that cool. I feel like I shouldn't have said that. I probably just upset a lot of people. That wasn't my intention. I'm so sorry. One of the nice things about having a mask on is when I vlog, people think that I'm just like holding my phone really close to my face and they have no idea why. Oh, look at all the little mini fowls. They're so cute. All I needed from Lowe's was some duct work. That will make more sense later. I have an air filter I need to get set up and do some things with it. Dang, these were really low. That just went up to 31. It was at 24 when I started. I don't know how they got so low, but they sure did. I guess that's kind of normal when you haven't driven your car in like six weeks. Oh, come on, car! What the heck is your problem? You know, I mean, hey. You know, teenagers, right? 14 years old. It's gonna be things here and there. Gosh, dang it, that's like the third time. It's fine. It's like an electrical fluke. They've looked at it over and over again and nothing seems to be wrong. It just puts all those lights on sometimes that I don't know. This is what I needed the plumbing. Well, it's not plumbing. What is it called? What was I getting? The stuff at Lowe's that I didn't even vlog when I was getting. Air ducting materials. Ducting connectors, air duct, you get it. It's just a carbon filter. How am I supposed to get that out of here? This, air filter. This is just a metal tube full of carbon. Helps clean the air. I mean, it's, it's, but it says it right there. There we go, come on out, come on. Probably would've been better if I had been zoomed out while I was doing that, wouldn't it? See, this has this fabric filter on it so that helps keep any debris from getting inside of here and what's nice is you can take these off and just pop them in the washing machine because they tend to get covered in hair and dirt and dust i mean that's the whole point is it helps collect all that and then the inside of this everything that's going on all the way down inside of this guy full of carbon which just helps kind of purify the air sort of those odors more than anything and then this external sleeve here helps collect the dust pumpkin why are you showing up as soon as i I'm done talking about this. Where you been this whole time, Pumpkin? Yeah, you've been busy sleeping, huh? Pumpkin? Pumpkin, I charged your fish. You wanna play with your fish? No? I don't know if this actually even works. I think it's broken. Nothing? <laughs> Nothing at all? Nothing, Pumpkin? Yeah, it's kind of loud and annoying, isn't it? That's what I thought. The first thing, I'm just gonna talk over the parrots and pretend that they're not making noise. That was the first thing I thought when I set this thing up and turned it on was, there's no way. She's not gonna play with that. All that noise, no. No, absolutely not. I know, like, there are some really chill cats who would not care. However, Pumpkin is not one of them. It's not flopping all over the place. She doesn't mind it quite as much. Can I have a kiss, Pumpkin? Can I have a kiss? Can you kiss? We need to clean your eye boogies. That was almost a kiss, thanks Pumpkin. Sorry, I get distracted very easily by my pets. And typically these are used to remove odors for people who grow really smelly things indoors, if you get what I'm saying. Not really the reason that I use them. I do like that they freshen the air quite a bit actually, but I'm not, you know, there's, I'm not growing any of that stinky stuff out here. Not for the most part, sometimes plants stink. Oh, and when I do have to spray neem, I crank this thing up full blast, it makes a big difference. So this goes up there. I don't know how I'm gonna do this on camera. I think I even need to. It just, it connects right there on that end. And then the clean air comes out from right there. That's why I was at Lowe's. I needed to get some duct work because I needed an elbow so that the air doesn't just blow straight across onto 
the shelves over there, it needs to like blow out back into the room. That that wouldn't make any sense for it to just blow straight over onto this thing with all the nails and whatnots. Okay, that works. It is extremely loud, but it works. I have it rigged up over here on its little controller. This, like I said, isn't something. Just turn it off. Why won't it turn off? Oh, that could be a problem. Do I turn it off this way? Okay, that doesn't make any sense. It's not even something I'm really planning on using that often. But since I already had the fan, this duct fan right here, I just kind of wanted to go ahead and get that set up somewhere where if I wanted to use it, I could. Because for the past few years, it was just sitting over here on the ground and that the fan part sat right here. And then it was just shooting straight up at the ceiling. It did, There wasn't much of a point to that. And it takes up space on the ground. I'm trying to get the ground cleared up out here. So ultimately I just wanted to get this up and off the ground. Now I have a new filter on it. So if I want to turn it on and freshen the air up a little bit, I can. I didn't end up putting the elbow on it because it just didn't really make much of a difference. Instead, I put this, I'm calling it a diffuser, but I think that that's actually for vents for your floor or for your wall. But I got it because it would diffuse the air and not just be like such a harsh tube, like it just a straight up blast of air. Now, I mean, I really need to do more things outside. So maybe I'll pick up in the morning. It's dark now because it's five o'clock in this time of year. It's pitch black by Fiverr. 5.30. I just love that. So much fun. Hey, old man. How you doing, Tuck? Having a good day? Tucker's having a good day. Okay, bye, Tucker. Do you ever leave a pumpkin out for way too long and then absolutely dread the idea of having to pick it up and get rid of it? Ugh, that's real gross. Okay, so my plan for this area was to get it, like, all tidied up and pretty for the winter time. I mean, y'all were just with me at Lowe's. They don't have any plants. Ran by Home Depot, same thing. And then I hit up a few of my local nurseries, which I kind of would have preferred to get plants from them anyways. But there's nothing. Everybody bought all the plants. So uh, what I was going to do here was I was going to put a skip laurel in each one of these blue pots here. Then I have a planter on my front porch to go in, in, the, in the center right here. And then in the spring, when I want to do something different with these planters, I could pull those skip laurels and plant them up here on this wall because that pine tree is gone now. And that would add some privacy. And obviously, I mean, this is a mess. There's still plenty of cleaning to do. But not find any skip laurels. With what's going on with COVID, I didn't really think it was necessary to be going all over the place and trying to find them. So I just kind of decided to just not do that. That's fine. I never out here in the winter time anyway so focus on getting leaves cleaned up and those sorts of things i won't bore y'all with that though that's not fun oh this is different i don't think yet yeah, hadn't mentioned this pool's all covered up it's that time of year i mean it feels nice it's like 70 degrees outside it's time late november time to cover the pool up and all that's really left to do out here is i need to get this one well, there are tons of things left to do but as far as the tropicals are concerned need to get the queen palm pulled but Looking at the extended forecast, it should be okay here for, I mean, maybe several more weeks. Who knows? But it's good for at least another two weeks. The big banana clump got that topped off. They'll get cut down further than this when it's time to protect them for winter time. But I like to do it in levels and layers. So in the next week or two, I'll get, I don't know, probably a foot of mulch on here and then leave them alone until it looks like it's going to get really, really cold. Then I'll cut them to being just about two feet tall and mulch the rest of them with a good foot or so of mulch right above whatever the highest point is of those cuts. Oh, and I got the mule palms pulled out of their big planters. So that's done. Sometimes that can be very difficult, but I had someone helping me, so they just slid right out. Hi, Tucker, you good boy. You could do your pretty Christmas collar. You so handsome, Tucker. The process of cutting things is slowly starting to happen. And cut that, get the colocasias cut down, and just keep working my way around, get those gingers. Need to take this and set banana inside like i said it's not terribly cold yet but i mean it's it's done more gingers I think i already mentioned those this clump of bananas over here and that's it all the fun exciting stuff is done for the year outside now that i have the grow space set up it's nowhere near as much fun for me to be out here because it's like i have a new toy and i, I just want to go in there and play with my new toy i went ahead and decided that i'm just gonna be a little bit lazy this year and treat myself so i ordered pop-up tents to put over these sable miners in years past i had these they were awesome they don't make me work they were umbrella like little I don't know how to describe it. I think they were called umbrella greenhouses or umbrella frost protection things. Very much as they sound, it was like just a protective material over a frame with a pole in the middle and you ship on the thing in the middle and it opened up like an umbrella. And it had a stake in the middle and you just popped it down over the plant. I loved those because they were so easy to store during the winter time. They just folded into 
you know, a long pole with the fabric on them and you put them away. They don't make those anymore. I had them for like four or five years and eventually they started to fall apart because they weren't made that well. They also weren't very expensive. So four or five years, not too bad. But really these things are so easy to protect. So it's a bit of a look. I'll show you what I got. This is what I got in place of doing it myself essentially they're just little pop-up greenhouse covers they're real cheap honestly kind of ugly they didn't look as ugly in the pictures but it's fine as all the info back here the biggest one that i could find online was this one the 28 by 30 that's what i got i would have preferred to get the bigger ones but couldn't find them this was me being lazy and having a treat yourself kind of moment just because it's so nice to just be able to pop them open throw them over the plants and just be done with it otherwise i have to get the frost cloths out and wrap those around them and then i put lights on where i put lights on them first then do the frost cloths and then i put support stakes around them and then i'll put plastic it's just the whole thing i don't feel like it oh and i got the monstera repotted finally i still need to get it positioned somewhere in here but that was something i've been delaying for such a long time glad to have that done did that in the video prior to this one as of right now plants are piled in a way where i can't even really walk around out here they're very thirsty i'm gonna do some watering here in just a few minutes and then i have a appointment with my doctor however that appointment goes will kind of dictate the rest of this video though just because oh my goodness you're very thirsty it hasn't been that long since i watered Jeez. i only say that because if they have they've been doing these treatments um where i had my skin graft and it burns and it doesn't feel great for a few days afterwards so if they have to do another one of those then I'll probably pick the camera up and say goodbye. But if it's really good news, then I don't know. I will probably just like luxuriate and good vibes for a little while. And then, well, I don't know, we'll see what's going to happen. I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's no plan here. There's, there's no objectives this week. No. Hey Tucker, good boy, look at you. You having a good day, Tucker? I'm having a good day. Just got some great news from the doctor. Everything's done healed for the most part finally no more appointments any of that and just get back to life slowly still supposed to be kind of cautious at least for the next few weeks you know have to ease back into normal activity with my shoulder and the skin graft and all that stuff but no more appointments no more treatments and just relax that being said my motivation to like do anything outside is pretty much gone. I just want to play and have fun. Need to celebrate. Okay, turn that down. One thing about this fan, I love it, but it is extremely loud. Oh, and something I didn't mention about it before, I have that angle to blow across the water here. That's helped keep the humidity up. And actually it's working pretty well. That was an experiment, but it, the humidity was only at 47% before I turned that on about 25, 30 minutes ago and it's already up to 59% humidity right now. So that's working, that's fantastic. Because I was feeling so excited and happy after my doctor's appointment, I went and hit up a nursery. I didn't vlog while I was there because it was very much just an in and out, really quick kind of thing, you know, again, COVID. But I picked up a few plants. Who wants to do a little plant haul? Oh, I set this fountain up too. It was, I talked about in the vlog last week. I'm not really that into it. One, because it's not level. I keep putting things underneath it to lift it up and it's still the water just wants to, it drives me crazy. Having this blank spot right here, this big open spot where the water's not going over it, it that's like, it doesn't work for me and my OCD tendencies. It's not even that pretty. It has some little lights down in there, but they're not bright enough to really illuminate this. At least not when I have my filming lights on out here or really, I mean, period with the grow lights going like you can't even really it doesn't matter you get it i set it up it's fine haven't done a plant haul here in a while this could be fun i didn't get anything too crazy you see my orchid it's got a little spike coming up on it was it even in focus not really this phalaenopsis has really pretty light pink flowers and they're very stiff it's i don't know what the variety is it's just something i got from a big box store but it stood out to me and i've really liked it ever what what is your problem today behave camera okay so some of these plants let me you see hold on some of the plants that i got are really just replacement plants for things that didn't make it through the summer for various reasons this right here is an aphalandra squarosa the zebra plant i'll put the tag in there because i don't really feel like having to put the names up on the screen common house plants they have nice stiff green foliage with that pretty striping in it this one is bone they're all actually bone dry i need to do some watering with them just a little baby so has lots of growing to do i will probably bump this up a pot size and more than likely 
do a cut probably maybe even down here and then go ahead and root this section and that's just because i really prefer these zebra plants to be bushy and full and not just a stick because that'll happen sometimes if you don't give them a cut you'll just end up with a stick that is bone bone dry you need to give that a heavy soak that is something that i do really like about the zebra plants is they tend to be pretty resilient to drying out and they let you know i mean you can look right at the leaves kind of like with the hibiscus they're easier to care for in that sense that they'll let you know when they need to be watered I should probably put these in a bowl or something like that so they can have but do i have i don't have a bowl here this will do put a little bit more in there and get some water into the bottom of this so that can have a soak just because i noticed the other plants you'll see they need a soak too this one is new for me this is a philodendron birkin right there philodendron birkin fairly common i think i know not last summer but maybe it was the summer before they were very very trendy and ridiculously expensive i mean people were selling these for like 80 90 dollars online i'm not really sure why oh by last summer i mean 2019 not 2020 i've always thought they were pretty but like my mind wasn't blown by them definitely not to the point to spend like 80 dollars on one i don't spend that on like pretty much any of my plants unless it's like a great big palm tree there's somewhere between 10 and 20 dollars which i thought was much more reasonable especially because it's a plant that i've kind of been on the fence with the foliage is really pretty they have nice variegation on them but they remind me an awful lot of some of the variegated cannas like the pretoria and there are actually several others that are out now that have really nice kind of a gold to a yellowy variegation on them and I'm not a huge fan of yellow variegation. I tend to prefer more of a white, like a creamy white that blends into the green or different shades of green. Yellow, I'm more like, blech, not for me. For that price, so I was like, well, let me give it a shot. Maybe after I've grown up for a while, I'll see the appeal. Sometimes that happens with plants. We can look at them in a picture and not fully get the appeal but then you grow it and you go oh okay i get it this is nice this is it looks so much better in person especially considering all of the filters and things and photoshopping that we see online with the rare plants this is not a rare plant that can throw off the perception of how they actually look so now i have one it's nice again the leaf pattern really does remind me of a canna which there's nothing wrong with and those variegated cannas they're you know around 15 to 20 dollars somewhere in there so it's about the same thing but the nice thing about a canna as it dies back in the winter time you throw some mulch over it and it comes back in the spring much more of an outdoor plant cannas they don't do fantastic inside but just less work and the same kind of appeal but not everybody can grow their plants outside and this would definitely be a much better option for people who have to keep them inside and want that nice color on those leaves go ahead and give that a little bit more water just to really i just need to get a little water in the bottom of this basin here so they can kind of soak some of that up for a few minutes okay this one is a replacement plant this is a lifesaver plant hernia zebrina hernia zebrina I actually did a video on these i think i had one for i don't even know how long a really long time they're really fun succulents they're really easy to grow they have really fun flowers on them when they flower and they're not too hard to get to flower which is nice one that i had didn't make it through the summer of 2020 unfortunately so i was very happy and pleased to see that they had these at the nursery because in the past these weren't ones that i used to see all that often in fact, i think the one that i originally had i got off of maybe it was ebay i can't remember it was such a long time ago and i will probably drop this into a hanging basket these are really nice for really wide shallow dishes you can let their growth see how they have these growths that kind of dangle over here you can let that hit the soil those will root out and the whole plant will just kind of keep going across the top of the pot or you can put them into a hanging basket where you have to be more careful about these pieces breaking off i just like the extra airflow you get when they're hanging up i don't have to worry about the plant as much i have a little basket right here i'll probably put this in here at some point not right now though i actually think that these do look better in a wide shallow planter because like i said the way they creep and move across the top looks really neat and interesting for me there's also a space factor to consider i have a lot of plants some may say too many i say not enough always room for more i don't have a ton of space for those really wide shallow planters and this still has some time to even to go into something like that oh i forget i did a little bit of repotting right before i picked up the camera like really quick stuff outside so my nails are dirty sorry it's a gardening channel dirty nails happen oh yep see there they fall apart fairly easily but what's nice is they also propagate very easily well pretty much in the same way a lot of succulents do you can just set this on top of some soil 
and it'll put some roots out from down here and it'll take off and do its thing. Pretty easy plant. All right, now I'll just stick that back in there. All right, last but certainly not least, not at all. I'm very excited about this one. The rat tail cactus. There was a summer where I was seeing these at the big box stores at like Lowe's and Home Depot like fairly frequently so i just didn't think much of them and then i was watching plantastica's channel do you follow and subscribe plantastica she's got good stuff she did a vlog she moved apartments and showed her rat tail cactus she has it hang up in her bathroom go watch that video if you want to see a really really impressive rat tail cactus after i saw hers in that video and how tremendously long these growths get i was like oh I made a mistake not getting one of those. And then when I was at the nursery, they just happened to have a few of them. So of course I had to get one. I mean, look at it. It's so fun and long and like it's all wiggly and the prickers don't come off into my fingers very easily, which I appreciate. The needles on this are fairly soft, very sturdy. Like when I put my hands on here, they're soft and they're not coming off in my skin from barely touching them. So uh, I don't have to worry about them going all over the house. At least I don't think they do. Reb, let us know. Comment down below. How does yours do? Hey, look at those gross though. Aren't they cool? Look at how they just keep on going and going and moving along and hers like it's you have to watch her video so you can see just how incredibly long and big these things get this is just a tiny little baby compared to hers and this does seem kind of thirsty it might be dry i am a very cautious water with cactus and succulents during the winter time is there out here in the grow space where i do keep things fairly humid. Humidity is now up to 66%. It was at 47 when I first started, not like 20 minutes before I started filming. With that humidity, I just like to take it very easily. So they just get very, very, very light drinks right at the, I mean, I guess I could maybe go ahead and just, here we go. It's just, just like this, just a very, very small drink nothing dramatic or excessive no soaks or anything like that most house plants we have that rule of thumb to water the plant till water comes out the bottom i usually like to repeat that two to three times depending on the plant the reason that we do that is to make sure that the soil gets fully saturated all the roots have access to water it helps eliminate air pockets and things that can cause some problems and mostly to encourage deep sturdy root growth if the water doesn't make it to the bottom if the soil isn't saturated all the way through then the roots may just stay in one place they may not spread out how you want them to to have a nice vigorous plant however cactus and succulents shallow rooted plants so when i water them i'm not doing it with the mentality of making sure that that water flushes through multiple times for the most part not with all my cactus and succulents you know there are different ways to grow all of our different plants and a lot of it is going to depend on the soil on the potting media that the plants in some of my cactus and succulents are in mostly just gravel <laughs> like there's basically not any soil or organic material in their mix at all and with those i would be more heavy and i would flush through a few times make sure they get a really good drink but this does have i don't think you'll be able to see it but it's there's potting soil in there so just light drinks on the top i would rather give it a light drink let it rest for a while and give it another one and see if the plant has any kind of response to that as opposed to watering it so heavily that it just keeps flushing it you get it yeah no one asks i don't really know why i went on talking about how i water my cactus and succulents don't need to do that right now okay, so that's it that's all the plants i did get one other thing though look at it look at it isn't it cool it's so weird and wonky it's another mushroom now, i have these two back here that i've had for a few years and they just happen to have one more they had this one and I was like, well, I don't have that one yet. And it was marked down to like $4.99 because it has a little crack in it that I did, I'm sure the camera is not going to want to focus on. Yeah, you can see it. Little cracks in there. So that got the price dropped down. I don't even care about that because the two that I have already, those are broken and need to be glued back together. So what's one more to put a little bit of epoxy on and sturdy it back up? No big deal. Can move that back here to be part of my weird, awkward, wonky mushroom family. I have had people ask me about these before. They are from a company called Creative Co-op. Oh, and everything I have got here is from a nursery here in St. Louis called Greenscape Gardens. It's one of my favorite places to go and buy my plants. They have great selection and awesome staff. It's a nice, pleasant atmosphere over and that's where I got the two that are in the back just a few years ago and so I was happy to see this other one at creative co-op I think that they're open to the public to order from I don't think you have to be retail anymore I'm pretty sure you used to have to like be a retailer to get their stuff but I've seen some of their things on Amazon so 
maybe that's something you could find there. If so, I'll link it down below in the description of the video. I have some Amazon links to products down there and I will put that there, but I don't, I don't know if they'll have it. I'll take a quick glimpse and if I can find it, I'll link it down there in the description. Yep, like I said, that's everything. Not a ton of plants, two replacement plants, and then a two new plants. I usually have a rule that I've just kind of set for myself and that's that I don't allow myself to buy new plants until I finished up everything in the growth space like getting everything organized and set up and all the pruning and everything but I just I needed to celebrate. I wanted to have a good time and treat myself. I'm sure y'all can relate sometimes you just need to have fun. It's been a long year for all of us and then when I actually heard the doctor say we're good and that I don't need to keep coming back and doing these treatments it was just that was a Nice feeling. It's been a long, uh, like six, six and a half. I mean, it's been a long year because that's when everything started with the tumor. But by the time I was able to actually get into a doctor and then the biopsy and then the shutdown happened and then the surgery number one and then the cancer and then waiting two weeks with a giant hole in my body because the labs are backed up and people won't wear their masks and everybody's being jerks about it. Two weeks with a hole this big in my body and it was so deep that you could see my muscles. That's a long time. It didn't feel great. I don't know if that's as much of an issue with the different rapid tests that they have now. Hopefully these labs aren't backed up. People shouldn't have to wait that long for biopsy results just because people don't want to wear masks. I could, I'm not going to go off on that tangent. I kind of just did. I'll leave it at that. The cancer and then the skin grafts. Constant changing of this giant dressing, these huge gauze pads and having tape ripped off my skin every day in the same spot for months on end. Skin graft. The graft itself wasn't that bad. The thing on my leg, which you can't, I mean, I have pants on, so I don't know why I even pulled the camera down here. But it's this whole area right here, down here, all the way up to right underneath my butt, and then down here, that was all just red, raw, and gone. That did not feel good. I highly suggest not having to get skin grafts. No fun. <laughs> not that it's something you can really do anything to avoid. And then the skin graft wasn't really healing as fast as they thought it would. So the past few months, I think it was back in September, I started talking about how I was trying my best to be really careful with my activity levels because they were talking about maybe having to do another surgery, another skin graft, which wouldn't have been a very big deal like pain wise or anything like that, but it would have made it timing wise that I wouldn't have been able to get the plants inside and that would have been a disaster. So I was mostly focused on just getting to November, getting the plants inside, and now that's all over. Plants are in, healed for the most part, and can relax. No more of the ups and downs with the, cause the treatments, they weren't bad. They just put a chemical on these spots that weren't healing, but then it would like burn for a few days. Cause it's basically a chemical that burns down these lumps that were growing. So it's, this, it's a whole thing. Don't worry about it. But that would be tender for a few days. And then I could work for a few days and get things done. And then it was time to go back to resting because I needed to make sure everything looked good. And cause I want to heal, but it was really important that things looked great when I would go back to the doctor for the next treatment to make sure that there wouldn't be any more surgeries. I am so glad to be done with all of that. It's just so nice having that peace of mind that for the first time in a long time, I can rest my mind and not have to worry about what comes next which isn't always a bad thing it's good to look forward to the future but with the things like the surgeries and whatnot that I mean that gets exhausting after a while i don't really think i ever got exhausted from it because you know they weren't things that were options and i'm just grateful that i didn't have to do chemo or radiation so i was more in a mindset of let's just keep things moving along get this done and hope for the best and got the best. I mean, well, kind of. Ideally, there wouldn't have been a shutdown. I wouldn't have developed cancer. I wouldn't have a giant hole in my body. But hey, it happened is what it is. Still got to take it easy. Do the CT scans every year to make sure that the cancer's not coming back. But I'm grateful for how everything's gone. Had a lot of support from friends and family. And you guys, subscribers, were fantastic through all of it. So thank you. Lots of support and love and it really, it makes a big difference. The positivity and that group mentality was very helpful. So of course, thank you to everybody. Y'all are fantastic. Plant people, such a wonderful group of loving people. Okay, I know that that was a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I'm sorry, had to get out of my system. Everything's fine now. Life is good. I'm very grateful for how things have gone. One thing I did notice when I was at the nursery, circling back to stuff I should have talked about when I was talking about the plants, there's a much better selection of house plants than there used to be. And uh, of course we can attribute that to the thing that it's sort of a double-edged sword, right? The trendy plants, the plant trends, the COVID planting that's happened this year. There have been lots of things that are frustrating about it when it comes to price gouging and people really taking advantage of 
consumers. However, it's really nice to go to the nursery and not just see like the same dracenas and fiddly figs and those things all over the place. Really gotten the nurseries, at least where I live, it's gotten them to uh, pull up much more variety with what they have in stock and uh, I am living for that. I'm really surprised to see this at my local nursery because they're not ones that I would see very often. I've seen them a few times since I got the one that I had for such a long time. But seeing the Birkin when that was one that people were having trouble getting a hold of, like I said, maybe over a year ago, that was fun to see that at the nursery. And then the rat tail cactus and not just the same old Echinopsis and different like Altman type cactuses, cacti, cactuses, whatever you prefer. And the Aphalandra, the one that I had, I got from, it was either Lowe's or Home Depot, but Lowe's or Home Depot, they're more back to the basics. I've noticed with their plants because uh, they think they're having a lot of trouble keeping things in stock. So ones that I've been to are well stocked with, like I said, the basics. And there's nothing wrong with the basics. They have lots of sago palms and the cane yuccas, marginata dracinas, a few different types of palms, mostly robolinis and majesty palms. It'll be interesting to see what things are like next year. That's what I'm really curious about. When I was at Lowe's, I did notice they had some white bird of paradise there in the 10 inch pots and they were like maybe 18 inches tall. They were tiny, teeny tiny little bitty plants. They're going to keep getting smaller. That's probably the way it's going to be for a while because the growers don't have time to grow up these great big plants like they used to be able to. Used to be able to, you know, a 10 inch, I've talked about this before, a 10 inch bird of paradise was usually at least three and a half feet tall. Sometimes they, they would be like five to six feet tall and maybe 30 bucks. Now they're just they're gonna keep drinking. I was getting at is it'll be interesting to see what they're able to bring in to kind of mix things up as they're growing out the basics that they have to keep in stock with these other big box stores. Probably not going to be much, at least where I live for a while. This is like Lowe's where I live. They mostly stop getting in plants in the winter time. It's just Christmas stuff and then a month of nothing and then they'll start getting things back in. But who knows what it's going to be like this year because the plants are on trend and people are digging them and getting them and buying them. So it should be interesting to see. Things are new now, things are different. There's some good, some bad, and some ugly with that. But overall, I think that there will be a balance and should be interesting to see what happens. Okay, that's enough. I'm not gonna do anything else in this vlog. I gotta celebrate, which I don't, there's a pandemic going on. So by celebrate, I mean just like, I mean, I don't know, make a pizza and binge watch something on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, no, the same thing we're all doing right now. Next week should be more productive. Right now I'm kind of in playtime mode. I have some watering to do, a lot of watering to do actually, and then, I think next week I need to get my Adenidia palms moved inside. I'll try and get that set up and done and uh, I will be vlogging that because I think I forgot to vlog it last year. Process of what I do with them is a little bit weird, a little bit unique, might be helpful to some people, I don't know. Anyways, thank you again. It's a good day, been a good week. Hope everybody's doing well. I appreciate y'all, lovely, wonderful group of people. Hope life's just going beautifully for all y'all. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.